Hey Calc kids, welcome to 7.1 Integration by Parts. It's the first section in Chapter 7 on Techniques of Integration. So I'm going to start by reminding you that in Chapter 5, the substitution rule was a rule in integration that reversed the chain rule in differentiation. Today we're going to reverse the product rule in differentiation. So let's remind ourselves what the product rule for derivatives is. We have the product of two functions, u and v. So when we have the product, the derivative of a product, it's the derivative of the first function times the second plus the first function times the derivative of the second. Now, different books um, write this differently. We can switch the order in which we add. We can switch the order in which we multiply. But in the end, the result is the same. I am going to... Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to, just for the sake of convenience, I'm going to switch this V and U. I'm going to call this V U prime plus U V prime for a minute. And then I'm going to solve for, let's see what I'm going to do. No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to integrate both sides. So if U times V, the derivative of U times V is the function V times the derivative of U plus the function U times the derivative of V, then the integral of u times v is equal to, and I'm going to be a little sloppy here with my notation, v times u prime plus u v prime, All right? Now keep in mind, this is a derivative here, and the integral of a derivative, they're undo each other, so this is just going to simply be u times v. Now here, we only have the derivative of the second function. This is the function itself, so we are stuck with this integral, v u prime plus u v prime. Now I'm simply going to solve for this guy. I'm going to get this guy alone. So I'm going to subtract that over to the left and then turn I get the integral u times the derivative of v is equal to u times v minus v times the derivative of u. Now in the template for integration we change, we just use an alternate notation, the derivative of v we're going to call dv the derivative of u, we're going to call du, the derivative of u, and from this we get the template for integration by parts. Integration by parts says if we have the integral of a function times the derivative of another, the result is just this function times the, that actual function, here the derivative will appear but we have to identify the function from which it comes, minus that function we just found here, times the derivative of that one du. All right, so at first you might be saying, wait, what? Bear with me. This is really super cool once you get the hang of it. Now remember, just like substitution doesn't work on every integral, integration by parts does not work on every integral. So you have to learn to recognize what techniques we learn, we use for which integrals. And that all comes with experience. So um, first problem, let's show process of parts. So I'm going to integrate x times e to the 2x with respect to x. Now, if you notice, substitution would not work here because if we let u equal 2x, then we have a problem because the derivative of 2x is 2. Here we have the extra x out here. But notice, in this case, we're going to use this parts. So we want to identify, this is going to be my integral u dv. So we have to identify what we want u to equal. And we have to identify what we want dv to equal. So what I'm going to do is, because I know what I'm doing and it comes with experience and I'll explain how to make good choices, um, I'm gonna let u equal x and then dv is going to be what's left, e to the 2x dx. So I'm gonna identify this as a function and then this as the derivative of another function. So once you identify u in dv, I'm call that u, and that whole thing's going to be dv. Well, now I have to identify du, and I have to identify v. Now, we find du by taking the derivative of what we called u, so the derivative of x is just 1, and then we tag on the dx using our notation. Now, we have to identify what function's derivative is e to the 2x. And this comes with practice, and hopefully you can see that 1 half e to the 2x the derivative of this function would give us e to the 2x because the derivative of 1 half e to the 2x would be 1 half e to the 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2, which would cancel out with the coefficient 1 half and give us just that. Now, once we have this all into place, we're going to plug this into our template for 
with our parts right here. So U dV, so therefore the integral of x e to the 2x dx, according to our integration by parts template, is going to be simply the function u times that function v we just found. So x times 1 half e to the 2x minus v, which is 1 half e to the 2x times du. Oops, I didn't need to put that there, silly. Don't do that. And then it would be um, du is 1 dx. All right, so you may be saying, Ch -ch -ch -ch. well, we just introduced another integral, but notice this is something we can integrate straight forward. So let me clean this up a little bit. This is going to be, I like to pull my coefficients out front, one half x e to the two x. I'm gonna bring this one half out front. e to the two x, the constant one, just cancels out because one times anything is itself. So what I did is I started with an integral that I couldn't integrate straight forward. Substitution wouldn't work. And I made a, a different type of substitution using a process called integration by parts. I identified this is the function u and this is the derivative of some function v. From that, I identified the derivative of u and the function v from which that came from. And we set up this new template. Now what's going on here, notice we have an integral that we can integrate. We know the antiderivative of e to the 2x. So it's 1 half x e to the 2x minus 1 half. That's just the coefficient out front. And the antiderivative of e to the 2x, well, we just did that, is 1 half e to the 2x, right? And then we're going to throw on the plus c here and then just clean it up. Multiply our constants. 1 half x e to the 2x minus 1 fourth e to the 2x plus c. And that would be our final answer. Right, let me just show you what if we let u to be 2x and dv to be x dx. Well, if we were to do this, then du would just be e2 e to the 2x and v would be, well, what function's derivative is x? Well, it's 1 half x squared. So then we would get this new integral, x e to the 2x dx, which equals would be u times v. So 1 half x squared e to the 2x minus v du, so 1 half times 2. I'll just put it in there. 1 half x squared times 2e, whoops, e to the 2x dx. Now this is not an untrue statement. But notice we actually made a more complicated integral here because this becomes 1 half x squared e to the 2x, which is not a problem, no integrals involved. This just becomes x squared e to the 2x dx. So now we created an integral that's more difficult than the integral we started with. So our goal is to start with an integral and introduce another integral that's easier to integrate than one we started with. Here we raise the power on x which is not good, we made it a more complicated integrand. All right, so how do we decide u and v? Again, comes with lots of practice, but here's a couple of hints. So here's my template for integration by parts. Whatever you choose dv, keep in mind, whatever you choose dv to be, you have to know how to find its antiderivative um, in order to find v. So you need, therefore you need to be able to integrate dv. So if you can't integrate what you choose to be dv, then that's not a good choice because we put the antiderivative of dv, v here and here. It helps if du is simpler than u. And what do I mean? Um, polynomials, anytime we take the derivative of a polynomial, its, it's derivative is simpler because we're reducing the power so back here, technically this is a polynomial of degree one and its derivative is just one, which is a much easier function to work with. Um, log functions. Are typically what we look for. And it also helps if V is simpler than DV. So that one can be a little bit trickier, so. 
the key is you have to be able to integrate DV. All right, so let's try another one. What do we have here? All right, so let's do, all right, so according to my hints, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna write down my template. You dv is equal to u times v minus v du. So I have to let one of these things equal u and the other thing equal dv. So remember, we want to choose u in such a way that its derivative is simpler than itself. So if I let u be x squared, its derivative is 2x, which is technically a simpler function because we went from a quadratic to a linear. If I let u equal the cosine of x, its derivative is another trig function which really isn't any easier than what we started with. So I'm gonna go with the u to be x squared, then therefore dv is the cosine of x dx. So you have to get everything in the integral um, integrand accounted for. So this is gonna be u, that's gonna be dv. So from this that we get the derivative of u is 2x dx. And v is, well, what function's derivative is the cosine? Well, that's just simply the sine. So therefore, we get that the integral x squared cosine of x dx is equal to u times v x squared sine x minus v du sine x times 2x dx. I'm just going to rearrange this to make it a little more visually pleasing. x squared sine x. I'm going to bring the constant out front to and I like to put my x's before the trig function so I don't mistakenly multiply those two together. All right. All right, well, what's the antiderivative of x sine x? Well, again, there's no nice elementary function whose derivative is x sine x. Um, so what we can do here is we can use parts again. So we're gonna use parts again, I'm gonna do that in green. So I'm gonna ignore this right here, and I'm just gonna look at the antiderivative of x sine x. I'm gonna let u equal x, and dv be the sine x dx. So then du is gonna be one dx, and v is going to be, well, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, but the antiderivative of the sine is the negative cosine. So be careful there. All right, so then that's going to just become u times v, so negative x cosine of x minus v du. So let's just clean this up and see what's going on here. Minus and minus becomes plus cosine x, one times dx is just dx. And now we can integrate this guy and we get negative x cosine of x and the integer of the cosine is the sine of x, right? Plus c, because now we're all done integrating. So now let's put this all together. So my final answer is going to be x squared sine x minus two times this integral, which turned out to be this whole thing right here. So it's gonna be negative x cosine of x plus the sine of x right, plus c. So now let's clean that up, make it look nice. We don't like all those parentheses. I'm going to call this, let's start with what we started with, x squared cosine of x dx is equal to x squared sine x distribute the minus two, we're gonna get plus two x cosine of x, minus two times the sine of x, and then minus two times a constant is still an arbitrary constant, so be careful here, because this is just any constant in the world, so any constant times negative two is still any constant, so I know that looks a little weird, um, but that's just how we do it. So that will be my final answer. Kind of fun, huh? I think this is so cool. All right, let's see, what are we doing next? All right, brace yourself for this one. E to the x sine x. Looks pretty straightforward, right? 
Now remember, we want to choose u in such a way that the derivative of u is simpler than what we started with, um, and that we have to choose dv in such a way that we can integrate it to find v. So now in this case, if we let u equal the sine of x, I'm sorry, u equal e to the x, its derivative is itself e to the x. If we let u equal sine x, its derivative is cosine. So in this case, u does not become any easier um, with either choice. Also, if we let this be dv, we can find its antiderivative. And if we let that be dv, we can find its antiderivative. So I'm just going to kind of take a shot and see what happens. I'm going to let u equal e to the x just because it's first. And then I'm going to let dv equal the sine of x dx. So from that, I get, I'm just going to write down u dv equals u times v minus v du, just as a reminder. Right, so then u du would be e to the x dx. V would be, well, the antiderivative of the sine is the negative cosine. So we're going to get e to the x sine x dx is equal to u times v, negative e to the x cosine of x, minus v, negative cosine of x, e to the x dx. So let's clean this up. Negative e to the x cosine of x minus a minus becomes plus. And I'm going to bring this out front, e to the x cosine of x dx. Okay, so now we have to work on this newly created integral. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you right now, if we would have let u be the sine of x and dv equal e to the x, we'd land up in the same situation where we would have the exponential function and the trig function here. Does it mean we did something wrong? Absolutely not. But let's try parts again here. So let's do parts again. I'll do it in green so we know that we're doing a separate problem. We're just going to ignore this guy. And I'm going to let u equal e to the x dv be the cosine of x dx. So then u du is e to the x dx. v is the sine of x dx, right? So then this guy becomes u times v e to the x sine x dx minus v du, oh, v du right here, e to the x sine x dx. All right now, something really interesting happened because we're right back where we started. We don't know how to integrate this, but notice, this is really super cool. Sometimes our problems work in circles like this, and they often work in circles when we see these trig functions, especially when connected with an exponential function. So do you agree? that the antiderivative of e to the x sine x dx is equal to this right here, going right here, negative e to the x cosine of x, but then I have to add that, and this is just this right here. It's just that piece right here. So plus e to the x sine x, whoops, oh, don't, sorry, my bad, this should not be here. It's u times v, don't, we don't need that when we take the antiderivative. Wow, that's all right, I am not starting over. So it's just e to the x sine x, be careful with the notation, minus the antiderivative of e to the x sine x. And we use the dx when it's inside the integral. So how can we solve for something when we get itself back inside? Well, notice this really clever trick. What I'm going to do is actually add this integral to both sides, e to the x sine x dx. And I'm gonna add it over here. So now what I get is one antiderivative e to the x sine x dx plus another one of itself. This side just becomes two of these guys. And that equals negative e to the x cosine of x plus e to the x sine of x. All right, well, how does that help us? Well, the question, underlying question is what does this equal? So we have what two times that equals. So now we can simply solve for this by dividing both sides by two. So I'm gonna divide the entire side by two. Sorry, I'm off my page. Divide both sides by two. And I get that the integral e to the x sine x dx is going to be negative e to the x cosine of x all over two 
plus e to the x sine x all over two. And then don't forget our arbitrary constant because that always comes in at the end. So sometimes our integration by parts sends us in circles, but if the same integral appears on both sides of the equality, one has to be positive and one has to be negative for this to work though, or they would cancel each other out. I can add that to this side and get two of them on this side. And then this is what we're trying to understand what the, what the answer is. So I just simply eliminated the two from the left side by bringing it through. All right. All right, pretty cool. Again, lots of practice. These don't come naturally. All right, let's look at this guy, the antiderivative of the natural log of x. Now you might be saying, oh, I know what that is. That's a pretty simple function. But probably one of the biggest mistakes I see in calculus is when students um, try to integrate the natural log function and they say that it's one over x. So note, the derivative of the natural log of x is one over x. So the integral of one over x is the natural log of x. And technically we should do that, right? But the integral of the natural log of x does not equal one over x. Don't do this. Okay, so I want to choose, this is actually a problem by parts. This is really one times the natural log of x dx. So we can introduce that constant one, right? All right, so what am I gonna do here? Well, I'm gonna use parts to integrate the natural log of x. So I'm gonna let u equal something and dv equal the rest. Right? All right, well, whatever I let u equal, I have to take its derivative. So I could let u equal one or the natural log of x because I can easily differentiate both. Over here though, dv is either gonna be one or the natural log of x. If I let dv be the natural log of x, we're just back at our original problem because we have to find v by integrating this. So we can't let v equal the natural log of x, but I can let it equal one dx. Thus, this is gonna be the natural log of x. So by using this clever, substitution with parts, then we get du is one over x dx. And if we let dv just equal the one dx, then v is just simply x. So check this out, we get the antiderivative of the natural log of x dx is equal to u times v x natural log of x minus v du, the integral of v du, x times one over x dx so let's clean this up. X natural log of X minus X times one over X is one DX. And this is just X natural log of X minus X plus C. All right, so be careful not to make this mistake that the antiderivative of the natural log of x is not one over x. Do not do that. The antiderivative of the natural log of x is x natural log of x minus x plus c. So put this in your notes. Anytime we derive something, you can now accept it as fact. Can you check this and show? Let's do that. Let's check and see that this is in fact, that this is in fact the antiderivative of the natural log of x. So in other words, when I take the derivative of x times the natural log of x minus x plus c, it should just be the natural log of x. All right, well here we have to do the product rule, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second minus the derivative of x, the derivative of a constant is plus zero. So we get natural log of x plus one minus one plus zero, which is the natural log of x. All right, so put this in your notes, maybe put it on one of the handouts. You can accept this as a fact now that the antiderivative of the natural log of x is x natural log of x minus x plus c. Okay, one more problem. Again, these definitely just Take practice. So again, I'm gonna write down the template. U dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. And we gotta let u equal something that we can take the derivative of. In dv, we have to pick something that we can integrate. Well, here we have a one again. 
well, if I let u be the one, well, of course we can take the derivative of one, it's just zero, but then, then dv would be the inverse cosine of x, which would have to integrate, but that's our original problem. So this is just like the previous one. Um, we have to let u be the inverse cosine of x, and then we'll let dv be one dx. It's the only option, because if we let v, dv be inverse cosine of x dx, we'd have to integrate it, but we don't know the answer to that. That's the whole problem we're trying to solve. So the derivative of u, well, the derivative of the inverse cosine is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And v would be just x. So now we can pop this all in, and we get that the g derivative of the inverse cosine of x dx is u times v, x inverse cosine of x minus v du. It's times negative 1. Sorry, I'm going to slap you with my notation, summer brain. Okay, so don't forget that dx right there. All right, so let's clean this up. Nothing we can do here. This is just simply x inverse cosine of x. And then this minus and minus, I'm going to cancel that out, and I'm just going to call that plus. I'm going to put this x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. All right, well, what's going on here? We need to be able to integrate this. Did I create more of a mess? Actually, we didn't. We created something we can integrate. We can integrate this so we can use other techniques within parts, and we're going to do substitution here. U substitution. So we're going to let, because if you notice, if we let u equal 1 minus x squared, then du is negative 2x dx, and we have x dx, so I can just bring that negative 2 over to the other side. I get negative 1 half du equals x dx. So I'm going to ignore this, and this is equivalent to integrating. Well, x dx is going to be negative 1 half, and then it's just going to be du, and then I have 1 over the square root of u. So integrating x over the square root of 1 minus x squared with respect to x is equivalent to integrating negative 1 half times the integral of 1 over the square root of u du. And we can integrate this, negative 1 half. We can think of this as, this is helpful, u to the negative 1 half du. Add 1 to the power, so my new power is 1 half. Put the reciprocal power out front. So it's just going to be negative square root of u. See, we have, so this is going to equal, so I'm going to go back to what we started with, the inverse cosine of x dx is equal to x inverse cosine of x plus this, which is just negative square root of, well, we let you be 1 minus x squared. We'll throw in our plus c at the end. Don't forget your plus c, inverse cosine of x minus the square root of 1 minus x squared plus c. There you go. So again, you can put this in your bank of antiderivative templates. I'll never ask you to reinvent the wheel, but you may have to use this to integrate something like inverse tangent, perhaps, or um, inverse sine, hint, hint. All right, guys, that's it for 7.1. Uh, get busy on the homework, and I will catch up with you later. Bye-bye.